Over the last couple of decades, Johnson has experienced a tremendous amount of growth. Our job has really been to make sure that we're planning uh, progressively for that growth and making sure all of our infrastructure um, and other facilities are being kept up to date to accommodate that growth. In my over 20 years of experience in working with the city, I've been extremely proud of what we've been able to accomplish as a community and the growth and development we've had. Uh, we have uh, great business partnerships with, uh, for example, the Johnson Economic Development Corporation and the Johnson Chamber of Commerce. So it's a great place for businesses to locate. There's a lot of support from our community, from our business community, as well as our residents. And our residents understand that um, businesses are very important to the growth of our community and, and in our surveys that we complete every other year, we hear from our citizens saying they would like more diverse businesses uh, within our community. I think the city of Johnson has proven through incentives and their ability to work with the uh, development community a strong a sense of trying to get the community not only the right uh, products and so forth, and the, but I think the right products for the developers as well. JEDCO does a really great job of bringing businesses to our community. Our main goal at the Chamber is to help those businesses grow and thrive in our community. Johnson Community School District is the 13th largest school district in the state of Iowa. We serve approximately 7,400 students. Of those students, we have 64 different languages spoken in our schools. The breakup of our school districts uh, is that we have five elementary schools that serve pre-K through fifth grade. We have Summit Middle School that serves our sixth and seventh grade learners. Johnston Middle School is our, where our eighth and ninth graders attend, and then our high school serves grades 10 through 12th grade. We continue to make investments on many of the, the programs and, and um, uh, infrastructure that our community needs both from a residential perspective as well as businesses. We've made significant road improvements. We continue to um, make improvements to our trail system, to our parks, to our library. One of our biggest projects that will be kicking off in 2021 is the Ignite Sports Complex. 
which will be located in the Merle Hay Road Gateway, just off Merle Hay Road. This is an area where we have been planning for a long time to see redevelopment and reinvestment, and this project will be the keystone to getting that project started. The Ignite project is a significant investment, both public and private, uh, within the Johnston Gateway area that's going to launch a lot of new activity over there. Uh, it's approximately 200,000 square feet of indoor sports and recreation space surrounded by some private fields as well as a public park and some additional trails and road infrastructure. It really expands on the Beaver Creek Recreation Corridor that the city's been investing in over the last decade. That spans from uh, Northwest 86th and 70th Kayak Launch down to Lou Clarkson Park into the new Terra Lake and over to the Ignite Sports Complex. So we see that driving tens of thousands of new visitors into the Gateway area uh, as they complete construction, hopefully in spring of 2022. And that's gonna help attract many of these restaurants and other retail businesses that are gonna be supported uh, in part by those visitors. Uh, 2020 has been a very successful year in Johnston. We kicked off the Johnston Town Center, which is really going to be a transformational project for Johnston, where it'll become the heart, the downtown that we've always lacked. Included with that is obviously the Johnston City Hall, which will be opening soon, as well as the yard and many other amenities that will be surrounded uh, by many businesses in the future. The Johnston City Hall is a very special project. As the city of Johnston has grown and become more sophisticated over the years, it really didn't have a city hall building that was reflective of the culture and, and the dynamic of the city. Uh, I, I thought the city was very innovative in being forward looking to want to have a city hall, not only that reflected who they were and, and where they're going, but also uh, in an environment which was conducive to uh, inviting people in, and thus the City Hall kind of became the center point of the Johnson Town Center. We don't really have a place yet of, uh, of identity where Johnson residents can come and, and really let their hair down uh, and experience entertainment. And so the Johnson Town Center is really a place that we are uh, hoping to develop a culture and an atmosphere where people can come, sit down at a restaurant, uh, have a drink, and then experience a concert or go to the ice rink or splash pad. So businesses in the town center are going to reap the benefits of many of the public investments that we're making in the area. Those include the trailhead, the splash pad, the ice skating rink, and then an array of festivals and other activities that are going to start happening there in 2021. So all these things are going to draw folks into that town center and help support the businesses and the restaurants uh, that we hope they're going to locate there. The development parcels within the town center are also eligible for our TIF program. Uh, so there's some additional incentives to help get those buildings put up and to uh, get those businesses off the ground. Uh, and they're also going to be supported by about the 800 apartment units that have gone up within uh, about a three block radius of the town center. So there's a lot of new residents there um, that can walk over to that town center uh, and support some of those businesses that we expect to see. So we've got spaces for both uh, retailers, restaurants. We're actually talking with a number of breweries who are well-established and interested in, in being uh, a part of the complex. And we really think that uh, some of the first ones to pull the trigger are gonna be very successful and do really well here over the next uh, number of years. So uh, we're really hoping that um, uh, along with that, we've got a couple of other pad sites for office users to be able to, to come. Uh, who are looking for a place for their employees to, to be a part of an active uh, center where they can go and be able to use trails on off times, 
catch a uh, catch a break at a restaurant, um, and after work maybe grab a brew and a concert. And so. Uh, we really feel like uh, the Johnson Town Center is going to have a lot of what people are really looking for in the city of Johnson. The city of Johnson has been focused on public-private partnerships for several decades. These include projects such as the Town Center and our work with Hanson Company, as well as the Ignite Project down in the Gateway. Uh, but our longest standing partnership is really with Jedco, in which we cooperate on both marketing activities as well as uh, pre-development ideas and working with brokers and developers. So this has been a strong relationship uh, between the city and JEDCO uh, for several decades now, and we look forward to continuing that relationship going forward. What I'm looking most forward to in 2021 is first of all, hopefully getting back to some resemblance of normalcy, uh, which I think all of us are looking forward to. But also we have got a number of projects that are gonna make a significant impact to our business and residential community. The completion of Northwest 54th Avenue from Northwest 100th Street to 86th Street, which has become becoming a very important commercial corridor as it connects our businesses along 86th Street with some of the businesses located in Urbandale, uh, south of 54th and then gets really needed um, access to some of our improved access to some of our residential properties along with this 54th. Why Vision Bank is part of the uh, JETCO uh, is because of its uh, ability to work in the economic development of this community, which is a central part of the metro area. Um, we at Vision Bank uh, feel it's a very important community for us as a bank. The Ridgedale development just north of the Johnston High School is going to help uh, boost a lot of the activity that we've seen happening along the 70th corridor in the last couple of years. Uh, the 141 flyover obviously is starting to draw people into the area, and the Grimes development just west of 141 has really started to take off in 2018 and 2019. 
Bridgedale is going to bring in uh, approximately five to 600 new residents within the homes and the duplexes that they're planning. And they have a large strip of commercial property along 70th. Uh, that's also going to entail lots of new retail and other commercial development. We are just completing the Thrive 2040 comprehensive plan for the city. This really is a vision for our future growth in the community. One of the big takeaways from the Thrive 2040 plan is all the planning work that has went around our future growth areas to the north and west along Highway 141. While we've talked a long time about the need to grow in this area, the Thrive 2040 plan really uh, cements how that area will look in the future. We're looking forward to uh, future infrastructure investments within the Northwest annexation area in 2021 and 2022 fiscal years. Uh, this area covers uh, approximately six to 700 acres of development property. And it's gonna allow us to compete for some of these larger uh, projects that traditionally Johnson hasn't had the space for. Uh, we're still working through some water rights issues uh, through the Xenia lawsuit, but we're hoping that those are gonna be shortly resolved. And obviously we're hoping to be able to take advantage of the uh, the hot development activity that's happened along that 141 corridor uh, in the last two years. Well, the Beaver Creek development area along Highway 141, really we have an envision for that to be a business park, uh, an opportunity to expand our commercial tax base. Adjacent to that and the growing areas around there will be opportunities for more commercial, residential, as well as open space and parks to really continue to grow our community. 